Do it. Wait, wait, wait. Are you are you becoming one of them, Andrew? What? Uh, one of those cardistry talented. I was when card I was fifteen juggling guys. Oh, no, no. I can't. I can't. I I I, no, I can't. No, 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 I don't. This is this is my false, by the way. Ooh, that is a good false. Yeah. That's a ABC back to ABC. Yeah. Right on. Right on, sirs. No, I always have whatever. I always have cards, coins, everything around me. Um, but I promise not to get good. Don't worry. <laughs> That's what I'm really threatened by. I'm the. <laughs> please, just keep it in my realm. So, have you guys seen Mocking Jay yet? Not yet. No. You? I. I. I'm, I, I may love, have just bought tickets. I may be going in mere minutes. I love the first one. Um, you know, the second one, I'm like, that's kind of cool. But by the end of it, you know, I'm like, all right. You know, what, what the interesting part of the story for me had sort of happened. I will see it. I will buy it on Blu-ray. The inevitable, you know, our iTunes. I actually, I suspect, and again, we'll talk about this once I've actually seen it. But uh, uh, I think this might be the, my my... I'm going to use the word favorite part of the story, but what I really mean is the part that I hated least. Um, uh, Cause the whole time, like for whatever reason, uh, the hunger games ended up in my reading queue uh, uh, by a recommendation from uh, Nate Staniforth. And the whole time I'm like, why am I reading this crap? It's for children. Uh, but, babies. but there it's is one baby's toy there. There's one thing I really dug about the last book, which was the acknowledgement that we live in an age where, uh, propaganda matters more than guns. The ability to get your message out in a subtle way that resonates with people is more powerful than, than force. And in fact, that's really what the whole third book is about. So the idea that, that, you know, in, in, uh, I, uh, you know, we, we watched this happen with the Arab spring and so on. And if you've watched the, uh, uh, Academy award dominated documentary, the square, uh, that's, that's what the real life story of all of that is. So in that regard, I dig the fact that they're making him or, or making Katniss like a media construct, you know, whose job is to, you know, show up and, and it's more important that she look like she's fighting the rebellion than to actually fight the rebellion. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm, cur I'm curious to see where it goes. Like I, that's actually a big plot element. Angel killer three, two is the idea of information war. Um, info wars. Yeah, com. you know, you, you, 1776. Yeah, we can do we can do more damage to ourselves through paranoia and rumor than we need to with weapons. But I think it's interesting. Like, I think Susan Collins is a great writer. I think like I I went into Hunger, Hunger Games hesitantly because you know ah it's another YA book and a lot of them are are yaws as I like to call them. And I thought it was really more well like written. yawns. Yeah. yeah, am I right? Let me hear that. Yeah, but no, I thought she's a really really good writer. Um, <clears throat> I admire. All right, man, I'm so excited to... Gentlemen, I've got some messed up stories today. I'm so I've excited. got any messed up stories. And... All right, I've yep. got possibly the most messed up story you've ever had. Hey, hold on, real quick, test, testing. I'm Andrew Main talking out my I'm talking as well. Well, I mean, we're all, t we, we can't all talk all right. at the same time. Yeah, we can't. Try it. Guys, if we're all talking, then we just can't. Guys, like, guys, guys calm down. Get it, 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 it get us anything. Guys, guys. All right. Perfect. I think we're set. <laughs> All right, here we go. Let's just launch us in. Coming up in three, two, one. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Weird Things Podcast. I'm your host, Andrew Main, joined by Brian Brushwood. Oh, you know what? I actually reached forward to pick up a drink just to psych you out and cause you. Justin to... Robert Young. God, no, oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't even done. <laughs> I was blowing on a hot coffee and and I got busted. Straight well done. Cold busted. <laughs> Straight cold busted. Hey man, uh, look, you promised us weird stories. Let's let's dive in. Before we get to the really weird, messed up story, because I want to get people some content they can listen to before we get away from this. Sure. Um, because this is the kind of thing. The, the story we're going to get to next after this one is uh, you may never feel safe again. Well, I mean, first of all, we don't. We're both constantly terrified, um, and we're gonna die alone. But I mean, listen, and, and, we're we're cowards, Brian. Me and you, you know, we 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 shrink from uh, many threats uh, like small prey. However, what Andrew I think is threatening is all of our dear listeners. 
will never look at the world mm. they live in again after they hear this story. Okay. They may even be frightened of this podcast. I'll put it that way. But first, 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 yesterday. let's do more of the podcast that we might reveal to be a sinister force. Possibly. Uh, first, yesterday on Twitter, Elon Musk, the patron saint of the Weird Things podcast, Hollowed released some name. photos, some very awesome photos. One photo was what he called the X-Wing configuration of the Falcon 9 rocket. Now, as you know, SpaceX uses the Falcon 9 to do the resupply of the International Space Station. And we've talked about how they've been saying they're going to try to land that first stage. That's that big, huge part of the rocket that takes it to the upper atmosphere. They're going to try to land that part back down onto solid ground, in this case, a barge. They've landed them in the ocean before. And then once it hit water, it just sunk because they're not Jesus rockets. So... <laughs> The plan is they've got a barge. There's a photo of this barge. It's the size of a football field. They want to land it there. And they've shown these rudders now. They, they look kind of like uh, racquetball rackets. Paddles. They look like yeah, paddles, paddles, right? All right. And so Elon Musk released two photos, one showing these really cool kind of wings that pop out from the side of the Falcon to help it guide it down. And they've used them before on the Grasshopper test vehicle. And then um, he showed photos of the barge, which is huge. It looks awesome. Brian and I were talking earlier about how we were thinking it'd just be some rusty thing with yeah, some rags I, I, I in the I guess our biggest impression was is they made it nicer than they needed to. Like, yeah. like if the purpose of this thing is to float out in the ocean and accept a falling skyscraper onto it, you know, you don't need to make that look completely badass. But instead, they're all like, yeah, so anyway, here's this thing that's going to accept a falling skyscraper onto it. I kind of feel like you need to, though, right? Because you are you are coming in and assuming you're, you're, you're entering a playground that was previously only d the domain of countries with billions of dollars coming in and out, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like, even though you are a far more agile company, you still got to dress for that party. And that means it, that everything's got to look so, oh, Wait, wait, sure. so you have to show up like he has to be a general of his own country. He has to put on uh, uh, freaking like faux uh, indicators of battles that if he Elon imagines. Elon Musk came out with epaulets <laughs> and his own uh, medals on his <laughs> breast. Uh, like, I, Elon I, Musk announced he's starting his own space fleet right now. Sign me up. Uh, uh, dude, I'll tell you what. Here's what. Uh, knowing Elon Musk, he would not pretend that he fought wars. He would actually declare war on just random ass uh, crap in space and be all like, like, well, this was from the uh, 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 the Eros conflict. Yeah. So anyway, I just also I love up, it. And it was was amusing. Uh, and when it, I want to we'll get into the importance of this right now for a moment, though. What we're looking at is not a launch pad. It is a landing pad. And you know what makes it special? There's uh, never been a rocket landing pad before. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, I was about to say, like, like besides the fact that it's it's a, a landing pad, which we've never exactly. had a purpose for. <laughs> yeah, dude, that's amazing. Yeah, it's it's incredible. So they're gonna try to do a launch on I think December fifteenth or the sixteenth of SpaceX's uh, Falcon Nine. They're gonna do a resupply mission on the ISS, Ooh. but when that first stage after it detaches. It's going to try to land back there. In my opinion, in my humble opinion, this is the most important technological feat in rocketry perhaps since Okay. So so it's it's been Europe, it's been yeah. it's been months and months, maybe uh, years since we've last argued over this. But uh for the record those of you guys paying attention, uh, I became a convert of Andrew Maine's uh way of thinking about this. Uh, I agree that this is the biggest deal uh, in the world. Uh, specifically, can you give the short version of why this is so significant? So think about this. Since Sputnik, since that, which is probably considered, you know, every every rocket. Which, by the way, Sputnik, Sputnik was a, was a load of crap, right? It was just a, it was just a ding dong up in space. Somebody well, sent a doorbell into orbit. space. Remember, but yeah. what made Sputnik what made Sputnik special was the fact that it was the first time that we not only just since we had V two rockets that went ballistic and arguably to the edge of space. Well, the Nazis did. What did I mean by we? I meant they did. But those <laughs> bad guys. Uh, you were getting any kind of uh, wrong idea? Not we. Not we. No, no that. I, that, that I'm I mean, I have no idea what you're talking about. Anyhow, um, 
Then the Hutsies had it, and we took those. We we repurposed them, and we you know we took V two V two rockets and painted them in peace colors. I mean, I, we we also took the people who made the V two rockets, and they're like, "You're Americans now. Uh, How great is that?" <laughs> so oh, we Scottsdale. We've had stuff that went the edge of space, but Sputnik was significant because it was the first time we, as humanity, but really Soviets put something into orbit and that was something fast enough far enough out there that it then was an artificial satellite and that that is as, as an achievement that's to think about that pre then everything you put up what came back down airplanes whatever but to put this thing up then all of a sudden bloop, now it's circling the planet was incredible an amazing technical feat what we're trying to do now what spacex is trying to do is to radically lower the cost the reason we had an entire space shuttle program was because it was expensive to keep sending rockets up and having them burn up in the atmosphere. Yeah, the very, the very thought was that it was inherently stupid and wasteful to uh, build an entire structure. And again, we are talking about what, like like six-story tall buildings, essentially, that are filled with explosives and get sent into the sky and then just land in salt water where they immediately decompose and go to crap. Yeah, and parts of it just burn up. They're useless, and they, they crash into the ground. So space shuttle program, the idea there was let's build something reusable, but it was semi reusable. Well, it was the, it was built of compromise, right? It's the yeah. stated goal was we want to be able to tell the world that we have a reusable spacecraft, which is a different thing from actually wanting to have a reusable spacecraft. Yeah, it, it started off with the intention of being reusable, but it then you know compromises set in and technological limitations, and, and and eventually we ended up with something where we could reuse part of it, but we still had to resurface the tiles and do a lot of other stuff. But the the you know, and we could reuse the engines on the shuttle, which was useful. Those that was helpful, but like the solid rocket boosters on either side, the main tank, everything else was totally not reusable. So two thirds of it was not reusable, and one third of it had to be, you know, man. Look, I, I, look, can we just so, say it? Like, if you watch The Wire, but it was about building a spacecraft instead of the drug war, then that's what you got. You you, you got a very The Wire answer with the the, the shuttle. Yeah, I, I will. I, 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 we don't want to undersell the technological significance. So. <laughs> okay, fine. <laughs> yeah, so. if, if you don't want to back my play, that's cool. I'm just, I'm just saying, I'm just saying that, um, uh, that that what we got was technically re reusable, but not as as efficient or as good as as maybe could have been possible. Exactly. Totally. Hundred percent agree. So, or safe for that matter. So, SpaceX has said via Elon Musk, he always thought, he's, he brought up the idea, it was only like four or five years ago, suggesting the idea of, re, of bringing back the rocket itself and having it land, which was a hero to crazy idea a few years ago because one, weight limitations, and then two, control. But now when you can buy a $50 drone toy that's got amazing stability that military planes didn't have 10 years ago, you know, and capabilities are just insane and we've been able to create you know lighter weight materials be able to use thinner amounts of aluminum things like that and you know, we saw the factory all the cool stuff they've been able to do um you know that's pretty awesome so he said about four or five years ago we want to try reusing a rocket have it land back on the pad people are like is 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 that is that even possible well, and, and also, like, I think the more direct question is, what's the benefit of that? Like, why would well, we want to do that? So the benefit is if you can land your rocket back on the pad and not have it go through violent reentry, you can theoretically give it an inspection and turn around and use it a day later or two days later to launch another rocket. You save that cost, two-thirds of your cost of putting something into space, the materials cost for the first stage are recouped. So instead of a rocket launch costing a hundred million dollars, your rocket launch goes down to ten to twenty million. You go from you know we're we're we've been bringing the price of putting things into space cheaper and cheaper. All these competitors of SpaceX that were around before are now saying, yeah, we're going to look into this reusability thing now because they have to. But what it does is it brings it, it makes it cheaper to get into space. Well, and, and, and here's where we get to the headline of of the entire story. And 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 again, this is all Andrew Maine, who's been reporting. Uh, Cracker Jack reporter Andrew Maine has been hot on the case for uh, years on the Weird Things podcast. Uh, there's a comparison that you made that has stuck with me. Now understand what it means. If you can have a three stage rocket where each stage, two stage, uh, two stage uh, where each stage, a uh, multi stage rocket where each stage turns around and lands itself gently 
onto a pad like this, Buck Rogers style. What does that mean for the cost of getting to orbit, Andrew Bain? It's cheap. Okay. It is no, real cheap. God, dang it. Cheap. God, no, it's it's my favorite metaphor you've ever come up with. Uh, there, there, there's a tangible thing you can compare it to. Maybe like a, a 737. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, the, the fuel cost to send the uh, a, a Falcon 9 to the International Space Station was equivalent roughly to the fuel cost of sending a 727 around the world once. That's so amazing. About, like, it's, like, it's, like, it's, yeah. You're, if we like build, if we happens. get going to build larger versions of the Falcon, like the really big multi-core, multi-stage ones, and reduce the cost. You're talking cost per pound to 10 to $20. Okay, pound. now uh, there, there must have been a Skype hiccup because, as I understood, it was $10,000 per pound to get something into orbit. You're saying we can get stuff into orbit for ten to 20,000 pounds? I think, uh, like, right now, I think the current, like, SpaceX price is around $2,000 a pound. And if we get into, if we start building really large Falcon heavies, multi-core rockets, we could get to around the $10 per pound. Orders of magnitude. Multiple orders of magnitude cheaper. It's so huge. It's so big. <laughs> like, roughly on par with, like, FedEx. Like, uh, you know, like, uh, give me, let me know when it shows up at the next guy's door uh, delivery service. Like, that's, like, insanely cheap. Well, You're talking, if you take your car in the driveway, Justin, you still driving your Matrix? We, I am. We took your Matrix. We wanted to put that in a space. Maybe 40, 50 grand. Dude, best prank ever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're like, hey man, have you seen my car? Oh, sorry, we're too busy looking at this crazy meteor. Take a what? look. <laughs> um, is that your Garfield in the window? <laughs> now, oh, no. now I'm going to get to the end. The headline for this particular reason, why we brought this up, and we've talked about this again and again, um, they're doing this launch December 15th or 16th, most important technological attempt. And it may, you know, there are a lot of things that happen. A lot yeah, of things may look, not go okay, right. Okay, look, uh, what, what's that mean to us? It's not like oh, we're going to be there. Well, as a matter of fact, weird things will be there, Brian. Uh, I, you, you got any gum? I'll be on the scene. Wait. NASA Social has selected me as a representative of Weird Things to go to the launch, Cape Kennedy, to cover this mission. So, okay, are you going to do like a live stream on this? Yeah, I mean, if anybody wants to hear it. You know, I, are, are you, are you going to hug the side of it as it goes up <laughs> into space? Pop, I'm going to be on the barge with like, you know, like cones, like bringing it down, you know, and they're going to look through the, the, you know, the little camera like, what's that idiot doing? <laughs> That's By the amazing. way, that barge is totally robot controlled because they're bringing a rocket down on top of it, so there's no people on there. Uh, speaking of which, uh, we forgot like to that, talk about the whole other thing that's really, really rad that I, I hadn't really thought about. That like that's another thing that like has just come a long way in ten years. You know, that like we're gonna have this much camera coverage and it can be so fully remote automated. Well, it, it, oh, yeah. there's something delightful about the fact that we live in an age where because anyone could be an international broadcaster, it, it uh, number one, it, it just tunes down and forgive my language here, but but the bullshit factor like you can't get away with the propaganda or uh, and, and I mean that both in a uh, governmental sense, but also in a in a. Uh, uh, business and company sense, like like the fact that I don't know, ju just truth wins out, and and the mere fact that everybody can see how something is done, they turn around and try to compete with it, and and as a result, humanity wins because we just work harder and faster and grow. By the way, uh, for those watching on the live stream, uh, we're looking at one of the test firings of the rocket that had the uh, the X wing configuration, which is I guess the other aspect to this story oh, that. What's that? Awful iron just came out. Yeah. yeah. So uh, the uh, the other aspect of this story was the the weird kind of pissing contest between Elon Musk and uh, and John Carmack of uh, Armadillo Aerospace. So John Carmack is a genius in his own right. What he's managed to do technologically with software is incredible. He's now you know technically you know engineering Oculus et cetera. And he had yeah Armadillo Sp Armadillo Space. He had his own attempt at trying to build a reusable uh, single-stage rocket. And so he had uh, made a comment to Elon Musk about questioning the, the design <laughs> on Twitter. Well, and, Musk, and it wasn't like he was wait, calling him out. <laughs> no. Uh, no, he didn't call him out so much as just like, hey, man, it seems like uh, that design would do this. And it was all technical stuff that uh, uh, I'm way too dumb to understand. But 
uh, he he definitely like I don't know it was weird like um, if if Einstein and Stephen Hawking's sort of you know were having beers and and having a bro talk where they were pissing on each other, this is what it would look like. I I kind of feel like it's more like if you stopped by CERN the the super collider and. You guys really need to put a power surge in here. A surge protector. <laughs> really surge need to put protector. in a surge protector. You oh, know, so, you, can so, lose so a... you, you feel like Carmack was just, just out of his element. You feel like he overstepped his bounds. I, I think that given, you know, we've been to SpaceX. We've seen the team of engineers there. I would be hesitant to say, hey, I think, and I think it, Carmack is brilliant. Carmack's absolutely uh, very, very smart. He's a software engineer. He's incredible. I, I thought that it was a little bit, odd to kind of use that form to be like hey i think you maybe missed it you know again he could be right well, too, and pl- 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 plus also like um uh as i understand it and again all of this is pr nonsense hype but uh uh as i understand it uh carmack is a little bit more hands-on whereas musk is is more the you know the ronald reagan leader of of this movement or whatever um, that's not how i understand it oh really the, uh, oh, no. uh, 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 elon musk is like full-on engineer Oh, he's yeah. I mean, he's he he absolutely is a he is a very very capable. You know, the, the respect he has as an engineer, but he's How also a guy know that this? knows uh, I, I always... better engine. Don't let the real engineers in the specialty do it. But as a guy who, you know, orchestrates all this, the only reason this is possible because he's an engineer that looked at it and said, "Let's break this down and see what we can do." Wow. All right. Well, I, I I'm thrilled to be st- st- standing here, very very corrected on that. Yeah, but let me let me ask you a question, right? If it was revealed in a Wired article that Carmack had sent an email to Elon Musk saying the exact same thing he said on Twitter, would we look at it differently? Or is it yes. because absolutely, it's in absolutely, yes. yeah? No, there, there's something like there's no way to tweet anything uh, outside of the context of it looking like a press release. Like I, uh, for example, let's say uh, I mean obviously we're all buddies and we do swap tweets on Twitter all the time, but uh, were we not, were we all doing competing projects, there's no nothing I could say to either of you that wouldn't look like, you know, you know shots fired. So yeah. even though, like, he's just getting this stuff on, he probably has, you know, uh, a, a thing on his phone that just, you know, tweets when people that he follows, or, you know, buzzes in when people that he follows tweets. And he sees that, he takes a look at it, he gets obsessed with it, takes a poop, he's reading it on his phone, he gets it in his brain that, you know, something's different that he would do, and he just hits him back, and he means it in a friendly way. You're saying that he just needs to know better. No, well, I mean, it, there was a little back and forth. It was this, then, well, yeah, but what about this kind of thing? And, and Musk is a very polite conversation. I mean, it, like, like super- if, if, if anything, I would say that it's us who are guilty of, of blowing this thing up into a thing. Like, like it, it appears by all uh, outside indicators that this was not a thing between either of them. But, like, uh, but, but we as mere humans looking up at the gods of Olympus are like, oh, my God, did you hear what Apollo just said to, to Hephaestus? Yeah. At Hephaestus, <laughs> Vulcan. But I mean, it's the the conversation you follow goes on. Well, I don't screw you, but he's like he, he Carmack's concerned about the stability of it, et cetera, and all that. So it, it sort of w- took on. But again, you know, like Brian says, we're we're chimpanzees poking sticks at flying things in the sky. <laughs> yeah, uh, dude, that's fantastic though. That's so huge. And I just realized it's so funny to uh, roll down through uh, Elon Musk's Twitter feed where he can go from casually arguing about the merits of an X-wing configuration of paddles on the side of a rocket and, oh, by the way, the Tesla S is now in Hong Kong. I mean, that's amazing. Yeah. Uh, now, let me, uh, just just uh, looking forward, let's assume that this reusable rocket uh, first attempt goes well. What, like... As I elementary kind of understand the process, now we open up this whole new world of exactly what it would take to get it ready to go again, and exactly what damage uh, you can you can minimize when it comes down, and you can see what will happen to to put it back up, right? So that's a really good point because in my mind, the question is, and I'm sure this is what the engineers are solving or whatever is we just want to land this thing on this free floating pad in the middle of the ocean. That way we know it lands. But then let's say they pull it off. 
uh, like, can you imagine the engineers be like, uh, you know, Elon's like, great, how are you getting at home now? And they're all like, Bleh. we kind of thought it was going to blow up, to be yeah, honest with right? you. <laughs> it's like, well, we built all this to sink. I mean, do we even need to bring it home at this yeah. point? Uh, I mean, what, what do you think they do? You think they just grab a, a tugboat? Two bungee cords and uh, a, a Miami Vice cigarette boat and just drag it on back. A dude swimming. He's got like a bungee cord in his teeth, just paddling as fast as he can, towing this thing behind. But I mean, like, like if if them landing this is the is is the greatest achievement since Sputnik, then it launching for the next time. You know, the the, the first uh, one they launched again. Greatest achievement since happened. Apollo. Since Apollo. Let me clarify. Okay, then since Apollo, then then. If if this is that, I don't want to be guilty of hyperbole here. Uh, <laughs> we just compared uh, we just compared Elon Musk himself to the Greek god Apollo. So <laughs> yeah. uh, hyperbole is certainly our uh, in our tool belt. Uh, but but once it lands, that's an achievement. Once it takes off again, it would be an equal, if not greater, achievement. I mean, right? w w would that be kind of um, uh, w would that be a bit of hubris to immediately try to take this? first attempt to even land it and make sure that craft is the one that gets sent back up or would it uh would it make more sense to to uh, you know have it break it all apart so that you can inspect for a billion little micro fractures and all the things that that we don't know we like we've never we've never landed a a vertically so, a, you know uh, i think that's i think my guess is what he's going to try is they're going to take it into the shop they are going to totally disassemble it. They're going to x-ray it. They're going to look at all of that. And then if it's suitable, they will put it back together. Because remember, every one of those engines that we use is test-fired hundreds of times yeah. on a pad. You know, yeah. It's already test-fired. So it's not like they're, you're peeling the, the, the plastic layer off of the iPhone and it's never been, you know, it's, this is, these things, they, want to be, they need to be worn in a bit to be reliable because that's how you know the things that just aren't going to hold up. And like, oh, we got the, you know, we got the tolerance was wrong in this metal. It's going to actually melt through. Now we know. So an, an actual a engine like that, it might be safer than what's been used before because it's gone through the, the highest stress test you can imagine. As we saw with orbital sciences using these leftover Russian rocket engines that Musk had said was perhaps not a wise idea and they blew up on the pad and now their orbital science is like, yeah, we're not going to use those anymore. Um, well, so I, I guess uh, backing out, like as this is understand, like as if it's a sports game and we're just fans sitting on the sideline, which excites you more? The idea that this thing lands and then it disappears and we never discuss it again. Uh, and then separately, they're all like, we've built definitely the first ever repeatable, repeatably usable rocket or the idea that this thing lands, it goes off and they say, uh, hey, uh, we have rebuilt it and it's reassembled. Uh, guess what? It turns out that last year we created the world's first completely reusable rocket. Uh, the landing. And the reason is, is that if they can land it, reusability is inevitable. Right. It's inevitable. The, the technical challenge, the impossible thing that nobody thought we would be able to do, everybody thought it was so beyond, nobody even really thought, spent time thinking about it, was landing that first stage. That was just so absurd that you wouldn't find that in books, anything in the last 40 or 50 years talking about where, you know, ways to make rockets more reusable. That's why everything was like, you know, we knew airplanes were reusable, so that's why every design was some sort of airplane that you mount the rocket onto, and the airplane goes really high, and then the rocket takes off. Um, right. Nobody was thinking using that, making that big primary stage land by itself. That we could have within less than 30 days, we could see that happen. And that changes the space age. God, it's so amazing. It's, 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 it's built the space elevator, he uh, said, trolling. <laughs> Damn it. Look, I, 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 I we, we, we certainly we, make the space elevator cheaper. Look, I was wrong. Is that what this is all about? Well, do you want me to say it? Well, well, Brian. I, you were right and I was wrong. If you want, we can auto-tune it so that you can I play will not, it but in a I, loop. My, my position on the space elevator, mind you, is it could at some point, you know, the, it, it's just that the, 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 you know, my opinion, position right now is the technical achievements we need to do and the, the political and all that are so much harder than we can imagine. Not Actually, to say never. never. I will never so. say never on the space elevator. 
We uh, don't need to actually discuss the space elevator. I'm just, Brian's just like the kid. We all went to like kindergarten through high school together. And in kindergarten, Brian spilled chocolate milk on himself. And he's been <laughs> chocolate milk kid ever since. That's just, that's it's fine. just what it is. That's fine. I'm cool, being with, I'm cool with being that guy. That's totally okay, man. At the end of the day, we definitely have a massively cheaper way to get into space. And there's nothing but awesome about that. Awesome. I mean, this is awesome. So uh, gentlemen, so I'll tell. I'll tell. Hold on, real quick. We're talking about things that are awesome. You want to know something awesome? Uh, you know, yeah. What? Getting weird things more often. Doing special weird things events. Uh, that's not possible. There's no way. Really good show notes. Maybe mm -hmm. midweek Google not Hangouts. It's, the only way I'll believe you is if we're already halfway to our goal of one thousand dollars per episode for weird. Oh, yeah. Wait, what? We're halfway there already? How? What? This uh, 327 Patreons heading over to patreon.com slash weird things that are making possible uh, us treating this like a grown-up organization. I can't believe it. Uh, so here's the deal. Folks, if you like this show, then boy, howdy, you are you going to like it when we actually put effort into it? <laughs> uh, <laughs> not to say that we don't now, because we do. We love you guys. However, there are things like scheduling and making sure that we can invest more time in making this more of a Monday through Friday experience than it is right now. And as like it is actually doing the show. <laughs> well, well and keep in mind, I think the simplest way to put it is that um, in order to treat something like a grown up gig, we have to have the authority and the ability to say no to some other stuff. Like right now, weird things is in that. That weird, like, third place uh, spot for most of us where it's, uh, you know, we can't always say, yes, weird things is more important and we want it to be more important. Um, so do me a favor. Uh, and, and, you know, Tom Merritt's got, got a great saying for this that, like, you know, there are a bunch of ways that you can help the show. And Patreon is certainly one of them. If you got some extra coin that you want to throw around and you want to toss it our way, that's a really, really easy way to do it. Otherwise, spreading the word, rating us on iTunes, telling a friend, it, it all helps. It all brings the Patreon up because the more people know about it, the more people that know about it, the more people that just have some extra coin that want to throw it our way. So go ahead and just uh, uh, help support the show. And when we get to a thousand bucks, man, we're going to be having a great time. Double down. All right. I've got a scenario here. I've got a situation that is so horrific. Who's, I don't want to make who's light. Who's call for? Do, uh, do you need like uh, like some some uh, uh, police authority in here? Some security? Yeah, I want to do it a little bit differently. Hmm. What I want to do is I can, in a sentence, explain to one of you what's happening. Just one of us. One right. of you, and I want okay. the other one to be grilling you, trying to figure out what's going on. Here's here's what I'm going to do. I'm gonna I'm gonna mute things. Um, well, I, I can t I can text somebody here. No, well, well, here I'll just, I'll just mute it, and and you can even tell, or unless it would be better for the audience no, not be, to hear. Better this. if the listener is in okay in, in the in the in the position of figuring it out. Sure, 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 yeah. sure. All well, right, I, I'm ready to send it. Who wants to be the person that has this secret? I I'm great at keeping secrets. All right. Hmm. Like, remember did I tell you the one that Brian told me the other night? No. God, it is a bombshell. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Justin, I just texted it to you. <laughs> oh, good God. <laughs> All hey, right. guys, uh, what's going on? I, uh, I just sort of tuned in, uh, bit, uh first time, long time. Uh, is there something weird going on? Uh, Justin, you better tell him. I don't, I don't um, know what to make of this. Ryan. No, no, it, no, nobody uh, got hurt, did they? It, I hope nobody got hurt. Um... Well, somebody got hurt. Okay, uh, yeah, like uh, are we talking feelings hurt or physically injured or I mean, what is it? I need before before we start. I need I need to get a clarification on uh, from from the dungeon master. <laughs> Wait, no. Uh, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. If you're just joining us, this is a new show That's we're doing called Justin and gotcha, Andrew. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Uh, Brian. I've been feeling weird lately. Wait, wait, uh, wait, when you say feeling weird, like sick, uh, do you need to go to the hospital? Um, you know, I might have to go to the hospital. Uh, you know, it's it's not anything like persistent. 
you know. Um, Wait, so so it's like uh, symptoms that come and go. Uh, well, come and go would be frighteningly accurate uh, mm. if, if, if my suspicions are correct. Okay, so like, uh, I mean, what is it? Describe for me, like how how when it hits you, what it's like. Oh, I I. The funny thing is, I don't really know. Okay. I don't know for sure. I I just have a vague. I, 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 real quick, uh, I think you know where you're headed. You're you're saying you're not you're not asking for yourself. You're asking, quote unquote, for a friend, right? Oh, I'm asking for myself. Oh. Uh, this is this is a thing that is. That, I mean, I know. I think I know what's happened, but I, I don't know for sure. And if it is what I, I'm even kind of afraid to say it is, I really don't even know how to process it. Uh, you know, I'm going to say this, okay? Okay. I'm not even sure this is possible, Justin. Yeah. Right. I I have it on good authority that this is not likely to be true. Not that I want to be the one telling you that I doubt you. Not that I want to be the one telling you. It's all in your head is what he's trying to say, is that uh, why don't you calm down? Clearly, you don't have an actual medical condition. I mean, I need you both to quit mansplaining for uh, five hot minutes while I, I just... You know, I've been involved with this yep. lawsuit, right, Brian? Right. Well, uh, well, this went sideways. Uh, no, no, no. I, I forgot about the lawsuits. Remind me again. I mean, I'm just involved, you know, uh, in a, 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 a class action lawsuit. And, and, you know, it involves me just meeting with the legal team. And, and I don't know. I just don't feel right about it afterward. This, this isn't – you don't have brain cancer, do you? I don't have brain cancer, no. Okay, good. I told you about my lawyer, though. No, no. Uh, who's your lawyer? I mean, very. Uh, it's not interesting Gold, guy. It's not Goldfarb, In is it? What was that? It's not Goldfarb, is it? It's not Goldfarb. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. yeah, you know, thing is, he's got a lot of unorthodox. Uh, he he's, he thinks outside of the box uh, is what he tells me. Okay, it's now, very uh, persuasive. Very persuasive. <laughs> You know, he does this thing. Like, I mean, I know he's a lawyer, right? But uh, he, he says, you know, that it, it's better if I can remember everything, uh, you know, free of, of everything that happens in my consciousness. So I, I, I he, it's Wait, he, he does it, he does it. kind of bring things out of me. Does he does he hypnotize you? Yeah, I mean, you could call it that. Yeah, hypnotizing. That would be. You something don't know that he's for saying. sure that you have no memory that you were hypnotized. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's just. Uh, Wait, uh, Ju Justin. I I I don't, I don't want to say you got roofied by your lawyer, but if you got roofied by your lawyer, just sort of awkwardly respond to this. Well, I made him take a drug test, Brian. He was not roofied. I don't know. <laughs> That's pretty awkward. It sounds like he thinks he was roofied. <laughs> he wasn't roofied, Brian. I was roofied. I don't think I was roofied, but uh, there is, you know, this this hypnosis thing that I mean, he's he swears it's a thing. So, you know, uh, it's uh, okay, real real quick, just just uh, I I've heard of situations where people try to do memory enhancement techniques, and essentially maybe they'll get you into a headspace where. You may think you're remembering stuff, but really you're sort of just fantasizing. Is there uh, any of this sound familiar? I don't think that uh, my my lawyer, a guy with a bald head and a very police mustache, uh, you know, I, I would I would say that I, I'm unable to recall substantial portions of of the meeting. All right, real quick, is your lawyer G. Gordon Liddy? It's <laughs> not G. Gordon Liddy. Okay, although. Not far from G. Gordon. <laughs> All right, so 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 you got this lawyer. What is it you're suing about? Let's let's zero in on this. There's. Uh, uh, do you feel maligned in a case where it's like you have to represent the masses on this? Actually, no. You want to? It's not. It's not a class action lawsuit. It's it's a it's a divorce case. I'm getting divorced. <laughs> Although this would be great if you, if I ever get divorced, remind me to make it a class action lawsuit. <laughs> I if I ever no divorce kind. Bonnie, it's like I'm gonna find a class action uh, divorce suit, like seeking punitive damages, uh, because come on, man, that that'll be uh, because come on, bro, will be the stated reason. Um, so this lawyer gets a little, he's a little friendly, 
you know, it very, I, I thought it was initially just, I mean, I was going through a very traumatic time and, and, and he, uh, was, so was, it's a, it's a dude. And, and, and just, just so we're clear, I mean, you've in our entire, you know, seven year friendship, I've never bothered to ask you, but like you, you're a guy as well, right? No, no, I'm a, I'm a woman. How did I miss this? This is astonishing. You're, you're a chick. Yeah. Uh, I'm I'm the bearded cool. lady. That's, everybody, uh, 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 you know what? I, I I even saw photographic evidence that for some reason I forgot to remember. Oh God! Oh, why the memory? Oh. <laughs> All right. So 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 uh, I, uh, as as I, I I feel there are physical differences when I leave the the lawyer's office. Now, when you say physical differences, uh, like uh, he touches you, I guess, right? Mm-hmm. I don't, I mean, I don't know. I don't remember. I, I can't recall very large portions of the meeting, but, uh, you know, my, it's like, my it's clothes like and bra are from Bill play. Cosby, Brian. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's blurry. <laughs> this just, this just escalated very quickly. Uh, all right. So you're going to a lawyer's office, uh, to get divorced. Yeah. You're coming home, uh, with missing time as, as alien abductees would call it. Uh, and physical changes. When you say physical changes, like, um, uh, is is it on your private areas? My, my clothes and bra are out of place, and 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 let's just say it's, it's monsoon season in Central America. Mon- you're you're covered in water. <laughs> uh, south of the border. <laughs> Okay, I right, look. I I give up. This this uh, like I just feel like playing coy at this point would be disrespectful <laughs> to whatever obvious Not crime this person went through in Central America. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna use that sometime on a girl. Uh, well, Brian, you nailed it. You you actually had it, and for some reason you you went away from it. Uh, but I I I, I I've been hypnotized. Okay, all right, and and for what's this divorce wrong? lawyer? And I get hypnotized. Yeah. And then there is a crime that if it were to be read in the court by a pirate would be. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's I laughed entirely too loud at that. That's a horrific <laughs> crime. And uh, uh, whoever did this to you. I don't know whether or not this is true. This is the the case that was brought against Michael Fine as uh, detailed in a a court case filed by the Lorain County Bar Association out there in Ohio. Uh, It's always Ohio, man. The Jane Doe involved said that, quote, She'd be unable to recall substantial portions of the meeting, and afterward, she would realize her clothes and bra were out of place and moved, and her vagina was wet. After being told by cops that, quote, more definite evidence was needed, the woman recorded the next two telephone conversations with Fine and provided the tapes to police. As described by Thomas, one of the October recordings begins with a discussion of the woman's court case, but when Fine learns she is alone, he places her in a trance. What follows, Thomas notice, is an, is of an explicit sexual nature, wherein he induces her into multiple orgasms. <laughs> okay, look, you can't, you cannot uh, uh, pull bragging rights on the number of orgasms that you create, and also have a scenario where they, like, she literally, it was such a forgettable experience that she doesn't remember it. That's that's a violation of the bro code, bro. There are two women that have come forward claiming this. They've actually had investigators have made recordings where they listen to the conversations and they say that he is doing some sort of hypnotic trance on these women, inducing some sort of state that they're going to forget later on. Uh, real quick, because I have a friend who is writing a book about this. Uh, could you explain in detail uh, how he does this? <laughs> Everybody, what I want you to do right now. <laughs> oh, eyes for a no! oh, I want you to focus I'm on so a little blue sleepy dot. Right now, I don't know. It's just dot. sort of snuck I want up you to on concentrate. Me. And I want it to get larger oh. and larger oh, and larger it's and larger. Um, now show me everything. Fine begins sexual dialogue, explaining sexual acts that he will do for her, holding and massaging her hand and rubbing her shoulders. You know, okay, this is this is. Let's talk about uh, the weird mixing of disciplines, right? Um, so it is, I would say that right? n- lawyering. none of us think that 
massage therapy is inappropriate, right? We're all on board with, you know, you give someone $40 at the airport, they rub your shoulders, right? We're all cool with that? Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, what about, because for a while, I was getting, a, I would go to a, a hair salon, and he, she would cut my hair, and then sort of just unbidden as a surprise, she started rubbing my shoulders, and then I looked at her business card on the way out, and it says uh, haircuts and neck massages. And I was like, well, that's that's a curious enhancement. Uh, I mean, I definitely like neck massages, and I like haircuts, and I guess I'm glad that I'm getting both side by side. Um, also, not weird, right? Yeah. No, I mean, yeah, that's there's there's a, 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 a barber I go to where a lady has a little – she's got a little hand – massager thing that like vibrates her hands and she gives like shoulder massages after you're done getting your hair cut. Okay. Let's take a big leap and we'll assume that we're on the other side of things. Now, when somebody hands you a business card that says, uh, uh diver divorce attor attorney and neck massages. <laughs> like <laughs> at this point, we're genuinely into weird territory, right? I would, I would suspect the bar association might frown upon that a little bit. I mean, Why? They might think that, that might be untoward towards the profession. So, okay, so so if this is over the edge, we're let's let's get as close to this line as we can find, <laughs> like a uh, 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 dungeon master and neck massages, <laughs> like if somebody or um, 3D yeah, but, modeling an animator and neck but here massages. We're getting into somebody using a hypnotic technique to make somebody forget what is happening. Okay, first of all, I don't believe that. I don't believe it at all. I, I think it's that's all utter horse crap. I, I no, no, nope. You don't believe that's possible at all. I two women brought this against him, right? So unless they are in collusion, it would it would. I mean, it, it seems like it's more of a case than just if one woman had come forth and said this happened. He's on tape doing it. No, okay. So I you I, would have to assume that that he would have the same relationship with both of them and that they both decided to bring okay. the case. I believe this guy is a creeper. I totally will buy that 100%. I believe that he had sex with the women. I totally believe that. I believe that part of his technique involves holding their hand and speaking in a commanding voice or whatever and blah, 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 blah. Um, I also believe that the women would be highly motivated to at least say they don't remember any of this. <laughs> <laughs> because I, I believe that the women would say, you know, no, uh, I, I don't remember this or this didn't happen or what, whatever. But but uh, is there is there any case we have of there being a magic set of words that can cause another person to forget a important sexual event like this? I, I, I don't think that's possible. I don't think that there's any evidence to back that up. Well, let's 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 start with this question. Do you think that some people might be susceptible to forms of hypnosis where they will not recall what happened? I will say yes. Okay. Uh, in in so far as uh, we can also uh, like 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 I myself have visualized experience in, in you know uh, under my own encouragement visualized experiences so uh, vividly that that at some level when I rediscover those memories. I have a brief like like oh yeah that's right I won a million dollars and then I'm like as if it was a dream you know as if real remembering it was a dream I was like oh wait no I didn't well think about think about this too we as magicians are aware that we can do things where you know we can in the, in the process of doing a magic trick we can grab your hand we can touch parts of your body safe parts so to speak and you will not remember it we can have things happen in front of you you will not remember that's a long ways away from or or misremember. Sex. Yes, With correct, that. correct. Like and 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 almost always those are because we are crafting a a narrative, a situation, a a, a vignette that uh, the larger narrative preoccupies your attention, and that's why you don't remember the small part we touch the bat, the small of your back, be, and you know placed, uh, you know, I don't know, like it velcroed something to the back of your back or whatever. So you but turn we can, around. We and literally get people to have false memories too, though. In magic, sure. you can get people to a minute later they will recall something that absolutely did not happen, but they will swear that it was correct. So, my question is, and, and this is really the first time I've ever seen any kind of claim that somebody was using hypnotic, and that's when people say, "Is hypnosis real or not?" I'm like, "Well, we have to get into what." 
we would consider that. Yes. And, well, and, and, and people ask and understand, I, I've spent a decade watching C.J. Johnson do uh, hypnosis shows. I watch him go from being an illusionist to doing I was there for literally his first ever hypnosis show, uh, you know, with disastrous parts and surprising parts or whatever. And having watched all that, but not necessarily done a hypnosis show myself, uh, when people ask if hypnosis is real, I say, uh, well, it is true that you can put someone in a state of mind where they vividly picture such a thing to cause a physical response. For example, uh, if you've ever cried at a movie, if you've ever been shocked at a movie, uh, uh, you have experienced hypnosis, as I understand it, because you experienced a physical reaction to a situation that never happened with characters who never existed in a place that is only in the imagination of some writer somewhere. But you made it real in your mind, and that's why you know this continues to hold real estate in your mind as if it was a real memory. So in that regard, yes, yeah, you know, hypnosis is totally real. But um, we're not talking about a story of a memory, a false memory being created. We're not even talking about a memory being obscured. We're talking about a memory being erased, and I, I just don't see how that would work with hypnosis. Well, memory being erased or putting someone in a state where they're not making the memory. Yeah, I, 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 I don't know that I believe that, um, and and I might be wrong. You know, there's I know also I think I know I think a little bit, but if you have you know you mix in the trauma of sexual assault, you know, for which. Often there is reported to be, you know, people blocking things out because things get in, in different, you know, they, they get in places where the brain just, you know, finds it too traumatic to think about, you know, that it's, it's, it's not, it's not crazy to me that these people, that these women are repeating what they believe. And again, I believe everybody believes where they're coming from. I just, I, I, I just... You know, I don't know. Hypnosis is one of those very uh, surprisingly fringy kind of things where it's like there's uh, in that part of what makes hypnosis work is the belief that it works. And in that regard, you dip into, you know, placebo effect well, territory. And and, and I, I think too, but remember, is that there is their stage hypnosis. There's clinical hypnosis, which is very, very different. And then there's kind of in the fringes of clinical hypnosis. There's hypnosis techniques on people who are more susceptible than others. And there are people who have work a little bit differently and their vulnerabilities are much different than the average person too. Yes. And, and, you know, there's, there's various uh, evidence about the efficacy of hypnotherapy, you know, uh, for example, for quitting smoking, uh, uh, a, you know, two, uh, controlled groups uh, the one that's doing hypnotherapy will will, will slightly outperform the uh, the other one as far as uh, recidivism goes and so on it's I, I, it's I, oh, but, but again what my point is if, but then if you select for people who you think are going to be much more susceptible for it it goes way up and often we want to say like oh does it work the same for everybody that's the problem is there are some people who for memories differently they function differently whatever they're I, you know we know people who are highly suggestible and yeah, some of those people are, you know, perhaps. Let's better. just okay. call so, them so, for the sake of argument. Me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, I, and I guess what you're saying is that, um, uh, you know, if we're if we're trying this on for size, and again, you know, obviously some kind of crime was committed here, and uh, whether uh, potentially, yeah, poten allegedly, for for sake of discussion, let's say let's say there was some kind of crime. No matter how heinous the crime, due process still is yes. Applied. But having said all of that, you're asking me if I pictured in my mind the most uh, hypnotically susceptible individual possible, right? Like um, uh, whatever, whatever that vision is in my mind, yeah. uh, do I believe – I believe that she believes. I mean that's as close as mm -hmm. I think I can get. Beyond that, it's hard for me to really wrap my mind around that. Yeah, understood. It's double tough too because like uh, uh and we've talked about this on the show like my I believe my 10-year-old daughter would be a fantastic hypnosis subject. She is so able to go from zero to fully engaged in whatever story you want to tell. If you were to tell a ghost story, all of a sudden she'll be terrified. If you flipped it and made it a, a comedy, she's suddenly laughing. And it's like I I think that's a big part of 
what hypnotists look for in uh, subjects. And I think that's certainly on the stage hypnosis side, there's a filtering aspect where it's like you got a you know, thousand people in the audience, you filter, you get the first 50 of them who come up on stage. And of those, you look for the ones who are able to get themselves in an emotional state as, as fast as possible. Um, I don't know, man. You, you picture some lawyer sees a lot of chicks come in and selects based on that. I want you to imagine a large blue circle getting smaller and smaller <laughs> and smaller. And with that, your memories of what just happened. And when you come to, so, we'll yeah. be back into the podcast. So time for picks, guys. Ah, uh, guys, uh, I'm ready to start the show. Yeah, I my boxers are backwards. <laughs> That's also, I'm wet. Uh, the uh, uh, hey man, I've been playing a crap ton of Far Cry 4. I enjoyed Far Cry 3. We talked about Blood Dragon. I'm now playing uh, Far Cry 4 on the PC. It is exactly the same video game as Far Cry 3. Is this 3. the one where I collect the little jewels? Uh, no, uh, I think that's Bejeweled. Is what you're oh, this is the one where like, I try to add like threes together to get a six. And then no, that's, six that's and Candy Crush. Um, but that was threes. Uh, oh, no, that was, I, I was literally asking <laughs> for. <laughs> I like I had decided before you even said words that I was going to say <laughs> it was Candy Crush. <laughs> uh, no, no, no. Uh, F- uh, Far Cry Four is is great, and I'm really enjoying. Why it. are they crying, Brian? Well, uh, well, far away. You can't. So you, to me. I mean, you can't hear them crying, closer. Right? Why so sad? <laughs> can I can I tell you the joy of like explaining things? To your parents, like I'm, I'm on the phone with my mom because I'm, I'm going to the Orion rocket launch and then I'm going to the SpaceX Falcon Nine launch because that's how I roll for right. weird things. Understand? That's what, that's what you do. And my mom and I was trying to explain the landing of that thing, and my mom says to me, "Didn't they land um like a little thing and some big thing?" <laughs> she was talking about the uh the the comet landing. That you got uh... a lot faster than I did, Brian. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm sitting there. I'm driving along. Uh, yeah, they do that a lot, Mom. Um, <laughs> that is how one of the most important human achievements in recent history they landing. Landed, they landed a little on the thing comet. on a big thing. That's there how is, my mom. Andrew, is, Andrew, and his discussions with his mom are um, maybe my favorite. Um, like, and I, I oh. love Andrew's. Uh, Andrew's parents are among my favorite people. I love Andrew's mom, but him. And or, uh, Andrew and his mom have this just vaudevillian act, <laughs> like that goes back and forth. Where it just it is just a, it is like an electric back and forth at all it, times. Here's because part of the issue is my mom's really smart. She's got her master's degree. She's a really really smart woman. And so when she says something like that, if my mom was dumb, it would be like ha ha ha, silly mom. But I'm like what. What, what, what do you what do you mean? And so well, and, and that's the, one of the funny parts, right? Is that admitting how much of that story that she's ignorant of is the indicator of being a very smart person. Like she knows enough to say, like, like there are uh, there's a whole bunch of crap I don't know, but I do remember this part. They landed a thing on another thing. But she carried it with like, yeah, didn't they do something like this or whatever? <laughs> and it's like, oh, no, it's not the same. It's, it's not the same. Like, and now we're done. Now uh, we're done. <laughs> We landed yeah. the big thing on the small thing. Or was it yeah. the other way around? I don't know. The uh, dream is achieved, guys. I, I do want to real quick give a quick plug for uh, the Vimeo original series, uh, High Maintenance. It is so good. It is some of the best short film stuff that I've seen in the last year. Uh, it's a story about, a, uh, I don't know, basically a pot dealer's shaman. He uh, uh, He's uh, the only repeating character. There are a bunch of uh, little vignettes of different characters with different troubles. And the only unifying thread is that this guy happens to show up and sell them weed or whatever. But, uh, it is so, so good. Uh, the third one that I just watched, um, and again, they're expensive. Like you have to pay $8 99 cents for the season of these 19 minute episodes. Um, but, uh, and, or, or $2 a pop for, uh, you know, 20 minute episodes. Uh, the, the the one I just saw had some magic and juggling involved in it, and it simultaneously broke m- my heart and made me feel like somewhere out there was a writer that's a kindred spirit of ours. It's it's so very good. Cool. Awesome. Justin. Uh, Andrew? All right, fine. Okay. Uh, first up, just a little small pick, um, Star Wars Rebels. I'm still digging it. Um, 
did, kind of a did, fan. Did you read? Uh, Justin was the one who picked Star Wars: Conquer the Universe, right? I picked that. Oh, that, dude, I, I'm halfway through that right now, and I love it. It's very, Isn't very it? good. It's my. It's what I listen to when I work out. I love that. How Star Wars: Conquer the Universe, is a great, great book. Uh, Star Wars Rebels. Uh, if you want to. Watch Star Wars Rebels. It's available for free on the Disney XD app if you have like a cable provider that, that provides it. So you can watch it on your Apple TV, your iPhone, your Android device, etc. So the limited commercials, but children's television commercials are kind of awesome. So I don't mind those. Um, it's fun. It's fun. It's the show that I wish they had when I was, you know, 10 years old. But I have to watch it now. But it's still kind of awesome. But my real pick, I saw this last night, The Theory of Everything. Starring. Oh wait, uh, it says that's the story of Stephen Hawking and story of Stephen right? Hawking and his wife. It stars Edward Redmayne and Felicity Jones. Redmayne does a fantastic Stephen Hawking, amazing. I mean, not just looking like him, but in every single scene, even when spoiler alert, Stephen Hawking gets this degenerative muscle disease and is bound ALS, to a wheelchair. Yeah. Um, and he has no movement other than be able to twitch his fingers and do sort of some slight, slight facial. You know what he's thinking. He is super present in the scene, and it, it's an incredible, incredible achievement because it's not just that he's playing the part of a guy who can't move or whatever. Really, he captured uh, Hawking as well as I think possibly could have done exceeded that. Felicity Jones, who plays his wife Jane, she does an incredible job. You watch them when they're just these young kids in college, and over the span of 20-plus years, they uh, – they manage to play young and old really well. She's fantastic because she's she has to play this role that could be considered unsympathetic, but really is very sympathetic. She does it very well. The way the movie was put together was was very very well done. I'm a big fan of it. Go see the theory of everything. Right on, man. Uh, I think, uh, I, uh, uh, Oscar nom for Red Absolutely. Main? There is no justice if it doesn't get. It's too bad he's going to lose to Andy Serkis. <laughs> and Andy Serkis from uh, uh, Rise of the Planet of the Apes, or I mean, like, listen, I'm sure this Stephen Hawking thing's really good, right? Was he a monkey? <laughs> um, so. You're like, which would you give the Oscar to? A guy who talks like a robot, or a robot who talks like a guy? Come on. Oh, uh, touching on Star Wars, uh, Star Wars: Conquer the Universe. One of my favorite things that that mentioned. This is totally non sequitur here. Good. They talk about April, like April fourth, nineteen sixty eight. Two movies came out that changed the course of science fiction because up until it was, then, like, oh, oh, and one of them, oh, that's right, that's right. And one of the, what, yeah, the, up until, like, two, two science fiction movies yeah, came up Planet with, with had fundamental lost money you one know, of the, 15 yeah. years before. Nobody wanted to spend money on sci-fi, but on like April 4th, 1968, two movies came out. Brian? One of them made money and was profitable. The other one was not. Uh, Justin, I'd like you to guess what those two movies are. The same day in 1968. No. They, uh, I'm just going to embarrass myself. You go. No, no. I, it's I, not embarrassing. I, I mean, you could probably figure out one of them for sure. I, I can't. You go. Those movies were 2001 and Planet of the Apes. And uh, they were fundamentally different in their attitude. And they were fundamentally different in their marketing. Uh, Planet of the Apes made money. 2001 was not profitable. And it took years before they finally had re-releases where it eked its way into the profitability realm. But out of that uh, was, was this desire. Like everyone apparently spent like, what, 10, 10 15 years thinking like, man, if, if we only had 2001 to pitch all over again, well, how would we have done it this time? Yeah, and you know, you had, you had a generation of filmmakers – Steven Spielberg, uh, John Carpenter, uh, George Lucas, etc. Excited by the Br Brian De Palma. Movies. Did did you know that Brian De Palma wrote the crawl in the uh, in the original Star Wars? Rewrote it yes. for for Lucas. He yes. was like he was like, all oh, this is too wordy. It's dumb. Let me yeah. write you four sentences. Wrote it and then it was like, yeah, okay, that's what that's I don't what it is. No, if they've got to it, and I'm not at the part where they've gotten to the making of the movie yet. But did you know, like, part of the reason Star Wars had such amazing casting was Lucas cast Star Wars at the same time as Palma De Palma was casting Carrie. So De Palma would run the casting sessions and run the actors through while Lucas would sit back there going. Hmm, maybe she would be good. Yeah, you know, <laughs> and that's I think part of the success was they were getting you know you look look at Carrie and you look at Star Wars and like just incredible actors who just went. That's on uh, that's one of my favorite parts about the book so far is listening to. Uh, we have all lived the majority of our lives in a world where Star Wars is the most obviously powerful juggernaut in science. Uh, space fantasy ever, right? 
Uh, it, it's obvious that there exists a category for space fantasy. It's obvious that Star Wars is number one. But to hear the way this story is told, where it's like everything went wrong on this. Nobody understood what this was supposed to be. Think about it. Uh, uh, Mark Hamill is the only one of the principal actors who who went out to Tunisia. Uh, uh, Sir Alec Guinness just really, uh, he called the writing schlock. He had no idea what this was and thought it was ridiculous. There was a full-on revolt where, where a highly unionized British uh, production team and says, you know, they got, they got two tea uh, union mandated uh, tea breaks per day. And uh, they only, the only way they could go past five o'clock was if they all voted to, and guess what? Spoiler alert. N they never voted to go past five. And uh, I, I, I don't know. It's, 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 it's an astonishing situation to be hearing the story of Star Wars told where, and, and again, this is another thing in the last 10 or 15 years, we're all accustomed to demonizing George Lucas, but to hear him cast in this role as somebody who cares deeply and works so hard and bleeds on the page as is, is what he refers to writing as it's, it's a great, it's a great story. It's, it's astonishing. And I love it. And it's a, it's a big book too. I'm, 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 I'm happy to be listening to it. Uh, we awesome, got into bro. a conversation last night or on, yeah, last night or Friday, me and Andrew about whether Star Wars, uh, the force awakens or Avengers Two: the age of Ultron would make more money. And, and Andrew, uh, you, you had, you had a change of heart. Initially we had this conversation a few months ago and, and you said Avengers and now you said Star Wars. Why, why, what, what was the change of heart? So, I mean, the Avengers trailer looks amazing, looks awesome. The first Avengers movie did super well. The second one looks like I'm even more interested in the second than the first one. And the, the moment for me, though, where I thought, like, because, you know, part of me is like, well, how much baggage do the first three Star Wars movies bring with them? But then I was at the movie theater to go see Big Hero 6 at the El Capitan, which is a big Disney, you know, kind of fan audience. But it was just all all ages. And they did a contest before where one of the prizes they were giving away was like passes to go to Star Wars Celebration, which is going to be in Anaheim in April, which is the big, huge official Star Wars convention, which one of these dorks already has his tickets to it. <laughs> that would be me. Yeah. Uh, so anyhow, um, the pop at the mention of Star Wars 7 was in. I mean, I, you expect a big pop, but it was there was no fatigue from the prequels. There was none of that. It was just like insane big huge pop at the mention of that and i think that we may in the next week get a trailer and i think based upon that trailer you know i think we we may have an incredible amount of enthusiasm building and, and thinking that man my parents if they see carrie fisher and harrison ford bickering in the trailer my parents will go see this movie man i uh i don't know i'm still on team uh, uh avengers 2 gonna make more money i i just uh <laughs> Well, I feel sorry for the studio on the losing end of that one. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. I mean, the, I think the puppet on the left is going to defeat the puppet on the right. <laughs> <laughs> it's just I, like, both of them when they, when they become the first and second highest grossing movies of all time. You just see the gigantic uh, marshmallow man in uh, uh, Ghostbusters sized. A specter of Walt Disney just like arises from both coats, <laughs> well, and dominates I mean, like, as he laughs, and his master plan is complete. We we were thinking back in the day, a long time ago, that Phantom Menace was going. If you said back in you know mid nineteen nineties, like oh you know, what about a new Star Wars movie? How much money do you think that would make? You'd be like, oh, I'd make all the money. That'd be the number one grossing movie of all time. It'd have to be. I mean, wasn't it at, at the time? No, not even, nope, not even close. Not really? Even close. Huh. It, nope. yeah, I think it might, it might have cracked the top 10 initially. Hey, well, uh, what, but, what, what did, uh, like, did somebody see it? And that's why it didn't make money. <laughs> well, I mean, but that's, that's the thing. Is, uh, you know, uh, I, I reacted to that movie much like the, 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 the poor young woman who is now filing charges against her divorce, divorce attorney. <laughs> you know, like, it took me uh, months to realize what a piece of garbage it was. And I had already seen it four times in theaters, you know, like the, the, the idea of a good star Wars movie. I, I don't know if you can put a number on, on, you know, in, in the way that movies are now, if you can accurately put a number on what it's supposed to make, you know, if it's good, if it recaptures 
if it gives us another good chapter uh, within this framework, I don't know. Yeah, like I, 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 it, I, I, it's I, limitless. I mean, is it right? is, is, is it too late though? It's like I, I I'm I'm much much more excited about Avengers too. I I can't I can't cause myself. I'm so scared to care and, and and i think it will be good everybody involved is talented and the universe is a great universe and i think that there are more stories to tell but you're talking to a guy who who read a dozen of the expanded universe novels who who experienced that world and wanted more questions answered and it's like you know i mean even if it's good it's like i don't i don't know i'm just cautious i'm cautious well, you just don't want to get hurt again, though. Yeah, right. That's exactly right. That's why I have a different divorce but attorney. But no, no, no. But that's the thing is like, what if it's good? Like, I'm not saying it will be. I'm not saying that. I mean, it's I think it, I I think it will be. This is the weird part. Was I? Th I think all things being equal, I think this will be good. I also think Avengers Two will be good. Uh, all things being equal, I'm going to cheerlead for Avengers 2 because that one uh, uh, didn't hold my hand and tell me to forget about the last hour. <laughs> Good point. Uh, yeah, no, I mean, I think it's, 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 I mean, geez, uh, we're, we're, we're arguing about spoiled. Uh, for, no, we're, I mean, we're spoiled for choice. Well, it's adventures wonderful. Adventures of Thor, Iron Man, Quicksilver, Scarlet Witch, uh, and, uh, and, and Hawkeye outgross Han Solo, Princess Leia, Luke Skywalker. Man, that's and, the other thing right. too. It's like uh, you got to read this book, Justin. It it, uh, it it really takes you back when you realize how many things were just just a near thing, just uh, that you never know. Like they talk, uh, they talk. Have you gotten to the part where they talk about the uh, the opening crawl and the logo uh, and how it was a work for hire thing? Uh, everybody on the planet knows uh, who wrote the music to Star Wars. Nobody knows who designed that logo, that font, that fusing of the S and the T together and the star and the, the, the R and the S on, on, on the bottom because that was a work-for-hire gig. And it's like uh, uh, also they, they interview and they talk about the controversy surrounding the guy who designed the original uh, Stormtrooper helmets and... Uh, uh, there's a lot of there, it, 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 it's an amazing mishmash of everything. Uh, it, it really looked like in no sensible universe should this be the highest grossing movie in all of history at its time. But uh, sure enough, it started off on like 12 theaters and ended up being that. Uh, dude, I'm pumped. All right. Uh, my pick. Uh, so a little pre plug. Uh, but before we do another one of these here podcasts, uh, it'll be Thanksgiving. So happy Thanksgiving to everybody. Day after Thanksgiving, or as they uh, call it, Black Friday, we'll see the release of the 2015 edition of Go Home, Santa, You're Drunk. I Peach. love this. So, so, so you're not doing a sequel. This is a re-release with new content, right? Content. Three new stories. Uh, the first, uh, there's another Santa Claus uh, interacting with Pimp's poem. Uh, as uh, you know, listen, they, they get you gather around with your family every year and you read the brand new Justin Robert Young uh, Santa uh, getting violent with pimps uh, story. As one does. As one does. Uh, there is uh, a story about a layover and a story about pro wrestlers. And uh, I like it. I think it's funny. Uh, I think if you like the first one, you will like the second one, and it'll be I'm, scored I'm glad by this, uh, Andrew You're drawing Allen. from far away from your interests and experiences. Oh, and wait, <laughs> are, are they and, stepping out to to foreign realms? Yeah, you know, you know, you like to uh, you like to really stretch your wings a little bit, and uh, yeah. So I wrote about being in airports and and pro wrestlers, <laughs> which uh, you know exactly, and and uh, and winning the Pimp of the Year award, which uh, which the Santa poem's about. Uh, so yeah, go ahead and check that out. And uh, my my pick is uh, the the We Have Concerns podcast with uh, with with Anthony Carboni and Jeff Canada. I've been listening to that a lot. Uh, they're really really good. Check it out. I, everybody everybody says that. I was talking to uh, 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 Getawag uh, Brent Hughes about this the other day, and uh, uh, both he and John appraised it. And I feel like I've screwed up because originally because they're they're shorter. They're about twenty minutes long. I figured yeah. I would save up a few and then just burn through them. But now I've saved up so many that I feel bad beginning, you know, and uh, and, and it intimidates me. Like, I don't know where to begin now. 
No, I think if you just do, you know, you just just start blowing through them on one of your, you know, forty year bike rides that you do, and you'll be you'll be done with it, and uh, right. and then hop, skip, and a jump. I'm gonna I'm gonna start a podcast called Shut Up About Cereal. <laughs> Some, somebody hit me up on cereal, <laughs> and I was like, I was like, oh, dang, all right. Yeah, yeah I don't I'm, know. I, I gotta. I, I think one of us is going to start listening to it, and one of us is going to infect the other two. Just know that. I still haven't listened to a single episode of This American Life. Neither have I. What? But yeah, I guess this is a different thing. But yeah, I've listened to some This American Life. It's ultimately very, very awesome and very, very up its own butthole. <laughs> Feel like uh, that's about as weird as we're going to get right there. Yes. And we have another word to strike from the official podcast record. <laughs> <laughs> um, say it. Boys say and girls. It. Concentrate on the sound of my voice. <laughs> it's been weird. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> All right, saving it right now. What do we call on this one? Um. Mm. <laughs> Um, uh, Wings of the Falcon. Oh. Done. What? What's the joke you're making on the big font, uh, for Google? Oh, I, I popped open... Google on it and like it was super like it, it was like scaled up super huge ah got it I, and I had to go back and I went to click the Gmail same thing I had to go back and like set it for some reason it was set weird on that um I don't think I did anything but I'm not smart enough to be able to say for sure that I didn't do anything all right uh all right guys well uh I got a I got to do the, the the jury podcast, and then I'm going to do a live stream watching the wrestling pay per view Survivor Series. So right if you guys on. hang out on DiamondClub.tv, we got a rock block of programming right up in your face. Uh, awesome. Uh, Tanky is writing. If I got the follow up email, uh, I did. It's still marked as unread. Uh, I, I know there's like a thing I have to do for you, so I will do that. That'll be a thing. Rock and roll, guys. But in the meantime, I got to go watch me some Hunger Games Mocking Jay so that I can. It's a J. Ew. <laughs> it's my... okay. Okay. I'm yes. Brian's yes. brother. I show up often drunk on night attack sometimes. Oh, oh, look at me. I'm alternately between California and Texas. I'm Jay Brushwood. Oh, I worked on so many video games you've heard of. Oh, look at me. I look like the penguin when I want to. 